The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You are going to hear a conversation between Don and a rental agent. He hopes that his apartment problems can be solved. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. We shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. I am a rental agency. How can I help? Oh, hello. I'm ringing about some problems I'm having with my apartment. Yes, of course. If I can just get a few details first. What's your name? Don Chester. How do you spell that? C H E S T E R. OK. And the address? Apartment 4, 18 Ruby Lane. Ruby Lane. And that's in? In Newbridge. Oh, yes. I know the one. Could I ask how long is the lease? It's for a year. And you moved in on? Last week, on 24th May. Good. Thanks. Now, what are the problems you found? Well, nothing too serious, you know, but a few things that have been building up over a few days. Yes, of course. Well, the first thing is the fridge. The seal on the door is decayed, and we have a small child and need to keep milk cool, so we need to get that done straight away. OK, that's the fridge for immediate repair. And then there's a little problem with the gas water heater. Uh-huh. The switch is broken. Right. It's not serious, and we can still use it. But if you can send somebody over in the next couple of weeks or so, that'd be great. OK, I've got that. Then we're worried about the front windows. Are they broken? No, but there are no blinds on them. And you know, with privacy these days... And when would you like those done? Oh, it's not really urgent. But there are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes, we'll have those done for you by next week, don't worry. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. There are only thin curtains on the windows, and people are walking past. Yes. We'll have those done for you by next week. Don't worry. And then there's the front door lock. It's getting quite annoying. It often jams, and we sometimes have to fiddle with it for minutes before we can get in the apartment. I'd really like to get that fixed up right away. That's no problem. And then the last thing is the shower curtain. It's torn. Oh, right. We can get a new one and have it to you in the next week, if that's all right with you. Yes, that's OK. Anything else? No, that's all. OK, fine. What we'll do now is get someone over to you this afternoon if you're home. Well, I'll be out for a short while. OK. Tell us your preferred times. Well, the best time is about two o'clock. I'd have to check that with him. And if he can't get there then, what would be your second preference? Oh, any time up to 6pm would be fine. OK, I've got that. Great. Thanks very much. That's fine. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. 
You are going to listen to a talk about the food we eat. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Welcome to the food we eat, sponsored by Safeway. Increasingly, we know more about the effects of our eating habits and lifestyles on our health. While new information can change old ideas. The news stories can often be confusing. At Safeway, we try to help customers not only in the range and types of food offered, but also by providing up-to-date, reliable information in areas we know are of interest and which relate to the diet we eat. Today, we are going to talk about sugar. Recently, doctors have been advising us to eat less sugar. The health recommendation to use less sugar is for two reasons. Firstly, for the sake of our teeth, since the amount and frequency of sugar consumption links to decay. Secondly, as sugar is a good source of calories, it can easily be a problem if we tend to be overweight. The dental risk is because bacteria, which occur naturally in our mouth, feed on carbohydrates, sugar and starch, to form plaque and acid. Plaque is a sticky coating that prevents the bacteria being removed by saliva. The acid attacks the tooth itself. This takes time, however, so the trick is to avoid sticky foods like sweets, which stay around in crevices, feeding the bacteria. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions sixteen to twenty. Regular brushing, preferably with a fluoride toothpaste, helps remove particles and resist acid. The worst thing you can do is nibble sweet things between meals. It puts your teeth under constant attack. A sweet tooth develops gradually. And you might be surprised at how you can steadily unlearn the taste, taking in fewer calories and saving your teeth. Here are some ways: a, gradually cut down the sugar in tea and coffee till you can stop altogether or switch to sweetness. B, choose snacks with a lower sugar content: fresh fruit, raw vegetables, crackers. Milk or low-fat natural yogurt. Remember, some fruits like raisins have lots of sugar. C. Look for reduced sugar alternatives. There are more and more around, from diet drinks to yogurts, even jams and sauces. D. Try gradually to cut back on the sugar you use in cooking, especially in baking. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three.
You will hear a conversation between Helen and her tutor. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Come in. Ah, it's you, Helen. What can I do for you? Well, it's about that essay on non-verbal communication. I'd like a bit of advice, if that's all right. By all means. That's what I'm here for. How can I help you? Um, it's about that survey you asked us to carry out about body language. Oh, yes. I asked you to investigate what sort of touching is permissible between friends of the same sex and friends of the opposite sex. That's it. And then you wanted us to go on to compare the answers we obtained from people from our own culture with the answers of people from other cultures. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. There are students here from dozens of cultures, including Asia and the Middle East. Go and ask them. That's the problem. I'm not sure how to word the questions. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Go and ask them. That's the problem. I'm not sure how to word the questions. I think I've got far too many. People don't want to be bothered answering them all. Is that the list of questions you have with you? Let's have a look. Hmm, I see. Your basic idea is fine. You've got a checklist of the parts of the body we mostly use to touch people with and a checklist of the parts of other people's bodies that we usually touch. But you don't have to go right through the list asking a separate question about each item. You can make your questionnaire much shorter if you ask open questions. Open questions? What are they? Sometimes we call them WH questions. What, when, where. Those are examples. Oh, I see. Yes. We learned about them in grammar. I hadn't realised how useful they turn out to be. I could just ask one open question about each subject and tick the answers I receive. That's right. Now, let's have a look at the list of parts of the body you're going to ask about. Um, I see. You've got the head, arm and hand and, oh, it's over the page, the back, leg and foot. What about the shoulder and the thigh? They're important areas, and there are some others you should include too. Oh yes, of course. I was in a rush and forgot those. Um, what about asking people how they feel about being touched? Surely, it's hard for people to put that sort of feeling into words. Yes, you're right. That's why it's essential to work out a rating scale for each response. Can you tell me a bit about how to use rating scales? Well, there's no way to measure how strongly a person feels about something, of course. All we can go on is what they report about their feelings. So what we do is offering them choices of ways to express how they feel. Very strongly, strongly, or not at all. That would be an example of a rating scale. In this case, as your survey is only a small trial sample, I suggest you use that three point rating scale I've just described. Very strongly, strongly, or not at all. That'll be enough to enable you to draw some broad conclusions. You may go on to refine your survey later if you decide to specialise in the study of non-verbal aspects of behaviour. Thank you. I'm much clearer now. 
Could I ask you one last question? I'm afraid I've got a brain like a sieve, but I just can't remember the technical term you told us for the study of touch. It sounded like happy, but of course it isn't. Oh, you mean haptics? H a p t i c s. Of course, haptics. That's it. Happy to be of service. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear an introduction about the tutorial courses of the physics school. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Welcome to orientation week. This is the physics school session, and we'll welcome Professor Smith, the head of the school, to introduce you to the tutorial system. Welcome, Professor Smith. <laughs> Thank you. You may have noticed life at university is totally different from that of school. For you, tutorials are an important part of the teaching program. Tutors are the primary contact between undergraduate students and the school. A tutor is the student's personal tutor as well as their academic tutor. Tutorials for physics undergraduates consist of six students who meet each week with their tutor for at least fifty minutes. For radiographer students. Tutorials will normally consist of a group of about ten students who will meet fortnightly with their tutor for a period of at least fifty minutes. In the first semester, the tutorials are during weeks one to eleven. For semester two, they are during weeks fourteen to twenty-four. Everybody involved is expected to be present and on time. And the tutor will also be available in week twelve and twenty-five to discuss problems that arise during revision. But attendance by students is optional. Now I'm going to introduce to you the stages and activities of the tutorials. The induction period is from week one to three. I know that a significant minority of you experience culture shock. During your first few months at university, and the important function of this stage is to identify students who are having difficulty integrating into the academic program. In particular, tutors should check your attendance of lectures, tutorials, laboratory sessions, and this sort of things. Tutors also help you tackle work in a systematic and effective manner. Stage two begins from the fourth week. Some tutorials of this period are to be devoted to discussion or going over the students' lecture notes, but approximately fifty percent of tutorial time is to be devoted to coursework. You should finish the weekly homework assignments of two hours duration with at least fifty percent involving written work. At least eight homework assignments during the year should involve answering problems set on coursework. The written work collected by the tutor. Should be marked within a week of handing in, and generally the assignments should be graded. The third stage starts from week eight till the tenth. During this period, math and four core physics programs are included. The majority of tutorial time should be devoted to work which supports the lecture programs and laboratory work. At least sixty percent of homework assignments should involve written work. The assignment may involve writing an account of or notes on a specified range of topics. 
The written work should also be marked and graded. Short oral presentations by students should be included. They are possibly on general physics topics or essays. The last week's personal development planning is a structured and supported process. The primary objective for PDP is to help you to become more independent and confident, self-directed learners, and encourage a positive attitude to learning throughout life. It is undertaken by yourselves to reflect upon their own learning, performance, and achievement, and to plan for their personal, educational, and career development. Finally, if without evidence of good reason you miss more than two sessions during a semester. Or if the tutor is not satisfied with your progress, the matter must be immediately referred to the program director, who will normally issue formal warning, verbal and written. This will inform you that your place at university is under threat of withdrawal if no improvement is made. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.